Welcome to the show that literally takes it to the streets. No studio, no budget, no problem. It's Flatbed Tonight with your host, Chris Pies. Hi there and welcome to Flatbed Tonight. My name is Chris Haas, your host, and we are at the scary Saunders Farm in Munster, Ontario. Absolutely, on Bleak's Road. Even, yeah. even the name yeah. Munster, Herman know. Munster was yeah. a scary guy. Yeah. Like this, is, this, was, this was destined. It was absolutely destined because we're on Bleak's Road and in Munster and the township when we first moved here, we're now part of the city of Ottawa, the township is Goulburn Township. Absolutely. So we so, just fit into what- So I have to ask you then, yeah. I, you know, and, and I, uh, all these things in hindsight yeah. make sense, but when you were growing up here, yeah. uh, did you have any dream of doing this? Or, or like well, it was a different kind of terror. We had strawberries, and my father would wake us up at six in the morning to weed strawberries. Right. So we were just the. It was just a little different. Yeah. No, we didn't. I didn't have a dream like this. No, it, it just. Um, it just. We started as a strawberry farm, and that was it. And I had no interest in being near that kind of farm. I could never I work on a strawberry out. farm, or, or even that? be around it, because I'd eat all the strawberries. Yeah. I would be like down. You know what I mean. Yeah. You kind of get sick of them really quick. Do you? Yeah, you okay. do. I, yeah. yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah. Um, there are, yeah, I won't even go there. Uh, but um, <laughs> uh, but I, I You're still bound up is what you're telling me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but we, um, so my dad had this idea to do a haunted hayride. He saw this uh, presentation of this guy, Jack Marks, in, in Wisconsin. And uh, my dad said, we have to do this. It took him a couple of years to convince my mom yeah. it was a good idea. And then he started it, and we came back to help out. We'd all finished university at that yeah. point, uh, my brothers and sister and I. And then um, I helped out a little bit more and a little bit more, and, and sooner or later, it just it just became a thing. So, so yeah. So you you went to university, you came back yeah. home, yeah. and this has been like this is a going concern. Like yeah. this is not just a you know like you know if you if you build it, he will come yeah. type thing. This is you built this, and you keep building, you keep building. Yeah. Because I I've come here over the years. Yeah. And it's evolved. Yeah, it's way bigger. Like I remember the first time I came here, it was a drunk guy with a chainsaw. That was oh, what yeah. it was, and that was. Uh, yeah. It, oh, thank you. Yeah. No, I'm. Just I wasn't kidding. that drunk. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but you know, no, it's evolved. So yeah. now, like, what are the, some of the things that you have for people when they come? Uh, so we have drunk clowns. We have no I'm kidding. Uh, we have. Uh, so we have uh, a coven of uh, thirteen witches. It's a new uh, haunt that we have this year. We have a haunted hayride that does have a chainsaw guy. That, yeah. uh, and we have uh, 22 scenes through a, a 30 acre forest. Uh, we have shambles, which is this um, really extreme haunt in a maze and through shipping containers. And so we have six haunts on the farm okay. at nighttime. Yeah. But in the daytime, it's nice and friendly. There's jumping pillows and mazes and right. great thing for kids to for do. Kids, absolutely. But at nighttime, we take it to another level. So what's the level, at, at what age is it okay to scare the bejesus out of a kid? I want to know, because I, I, my kids, I, I, I ruined them, Yeah. right? Yeah. Like they were four, I brought them here at night, yeah. we, we chased them with the chainsaw, but I think it helped them, really. Oh, sure. Absolutely, mm -hmm. it's, you know what, people say PTSD, yeah. I say, you know what, grow the fuck up. Yeah. Right? <laughs> uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, but anyways, yeah. so, so what, what's the appropriate ages? Yeah, so in the daytime we say 10 and under, it's perfect for your family to come and enjoy themselves yeah. with the kids and everything else. And t you know, 10 or 11, and then 12 and up at nighttime. That's a guideline. Not right. a, it's not a rule, it's a guideline. Right. And so, you know, as a parent, you have to live with them if they're gonna have nightmares or, or what's appropriate or not. Yeah. One thing we don't do is a lot of uh, blood and gore here. Right. We do classic scares you know like the suspense and hiding in the corner and right. coming out at you and with a chainsaw or other right, things yeah, you yeah. know uh, so it's uh, we've always kept it clean yeah. and so younger kids could come but on busy nights we can have thousands of people here and it's not really a good place for an eight-year-old to no you know, no and yeah. it can, you know what I know and I know how popular it is yeah. because Mike I mean I used to you know we took our kids here and then they wanted to come without us yeah Right? Yeah. And there's the alarms going uh, off. Someone's stealing pumpkins again. Oh, you yeah. know what? It happens all yeah. the time. Actually, yeah. no, this is a nuclear test. Yes. It's a really uh, rough neighborhood out here. It is. Yeah. <laughs> is that, well, that's the thing. We were yeah. taking, you know, uh, one of the producers, uh, we were talking about this. We were talking about filming from the flatbed and stuff like that. So, do you realize how 
not rare a flatbed is in Munster. Oh yes. Like this yeah. is like a family car. Yeah. For, for people. <laughs> Funny you should mention that when we used to live across the street. So 41 years ago, we lived across the street uh, from the farm here, and my parents. So we moved out, bought that farm. And then this was slightly better. That was pretty run down, yeah. and this was slightly better. So we upgraded. Okay. And how we did that is we moved across the street, Beverly Hillbilly style, in <laughs> flatbeds. We had wagons, yeah. and, and it was the best. Like we had our washing machine on there and couches. And as a you know six or seven year old kid, it was the best. Well, we're I'm moving from, across you know the what? street. I'm from Sudbury. Yeah. We would just leave that on the front lawn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we'd leave there for a while until someone came and, and called yeah. the city on us. Nice. But yeah. you know. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, so I got to ask you. Over the years, yeah. you've had a lot of things happen. Has anybody actually died here? I need some wood to tap. Uh, no, uh, no, not good. That, not that we're aware of. Okay, cool. That, that's well, good we did know. have a funny story about that. I'd love to hear. Okay, it. so we uh, we get a call. We get a, a call from uh, we're we're closing up one night, and uh, over the walkie-talkie, someone says um, this woman can't find her husband. And we went, mm, okay. So uh, we bring her up and she's with her eight-year-old kid. And so um, we, we, we sent out all of our staff. And it's the end of the night. Everyone's looking for, I think his name was Francois was his name. And so we're walking the site. Francois, Francois, I can't find him, can't find him. So finally we call the police. And the police come out and we start looking. We said, we might be looking for some, a body, like someone he had a cardiac or something like that and he fell down. And so we're going through the, uh, we're on the ditches on the side of the road, we're looking in the ponds, we're it's like an hour and a half and we're panicking at this point. Now we're saying, so that was the, uh, the preliminary. Then we start to go uh, in lines all through the fields, looking to see if there's a body on the ground you have or like whatever. Things that you were poking with, like pitchforks? Pitchforks, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we turn them up the other way and just, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so we get, uh, so it's finally two o'clock in the morning and we're now, and, and uh, you know, we're like, Francois, if you can hear us, make a noise or something like that. We're doing all that. So finally, two o'clock in the morning, the, and the woman kept calling her husband's mobile, or c calling home. home to see what. So he answers the phone at two o'clock in the morning, and he lives in Carlton Place, and he had walked home. So. Uh, <laughs> now, had he had a few in him, or? Uh, no. No, not that we knew of, and so he came back. You so got to be so pissed off a, with your wife to just walk home to Carlton Place. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? that's uh, it. I'm leaving. Uh, it's 20 kilometers from here. Yeah. It's, a, it's a bit of a walk. Uh, so, um, it, you know, we uh, he got home uh, the next day. I thought my mom was going to murder him at that point when oh, he came I back to apologize because well, she yeah. put all of us through this. Well, this. No, uh, I mean, listen, know, yeah. all the people, all the first responders, people yeah. thinking that the the worst had happened. Yeah. You yeah. know what? I, I for one, I would have stabbed him. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you could have had you him. Here. That pitch you know what you could have done? You could have yeah. had him here the next year yeah. as, a, as a skeleton. Yeah, that could we work. Could, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they do that on that TV show so, Bones. Some people, yeah, something we like could, that would we happen. Could do that, yeah. 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 So, so uh, you know, we've gone way over time, but we're going to keep okay, going. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you one yeah. more question. Sure. Uh, of all the things, because you've seen a lot of things come come and go here, and yeah. and you work with your wife yes. every day. Absolutely. Which. Uh, has got to be hard. I've worked with my wife before, it's and the frankly, best experience in my life working really? with my wife every day. It's perfect. Are you taping this? Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, I, you know, so yeah, yeah. so what I, I I completely understand yeah. uh, the the dynamic yeah. in that. Uh, so my, my my question is is that you know as you guys do this together, mm -hmm. I mean, how do you actually separate the 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 you know what? I'm gonna say, I don't want to say the romantic side of your yeah. life, but your, your relationship side yeah. from the business side. Because sometimes in a relationship, you want to tell the other person to go screw themselves, yeah. right? But you can't really do that in a business environment yeah. or vice versa. I mean, I, we are lucky that we communicate uh, a lot. We got uh, the walkie-talkies. We have walkie-talkies <laughs> and uh, even face-to-face -face sometimes. Yeah. Uh, we, we talk. Uh, it's, it's, um, you know, it's something that um, we're, I'm really grateful that I get to work with my wife every day. Um, and it's it, it, but it is tough sometimes to separate those. And if we have an issue, a disagreement at work or at home, it, you know, it, it, it can be a bit of a challenge. But it is a family business, yeah. and that's uh, you know I've seen it, I've grown up in it, and now our kids are growing up in it, and they're getting the that dynamic and that vibe.
vibe a little bit. So, um, you know, we make it work um, mostly, I suppose, because we uh, communicate really well with each other. Oh, that's great. You know what? And communication is the key. It's yes. great. I, I, so, I really appreciate you being yeah. on the show. Yeah. Thank you very much. We're at Saunders Farm. We're going to come back next year and we're going to get, because uh, I'm going to get some more pumpkins. I don't know if you can see all the pumpkins we have here, but it's like pumpkin heaven. It's, and, and the frost is now on the pumpkin, by the way. Um, I'm Chris Haas. This has been Flatbed Tonight. Thanks for watching.